bid uh, for, uh, for our Toastmaster. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Monday, November 30th meeting of the Hilltoppers Group of Toastmasters. Can we start with the invocation and pledge? And I don't have an invocation, so perhaps just a moment of silence, and then we'll do the pledge. Pledge. I pledge the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Did I get that right? <laughs> okay, close enough. <laughs> you did. It sounded good to me. And so we've done club business and we've assigned our roles for this evening. I'm happy to be your Toastmaster, and we'll start by going over a review of the agenda. So could we start with the grammarian? I believe that's Maurice. Could you list your title uh, tonight? Uh, yes, as a grammarian, I will check on misuse of English language. And I also have the word of the day. The word of the day is penchant, which means a strong or habitual liking for something or tendency to do something. A sample sentence is, he has a penchant for adopting stray dogs. So in other words, he has a <laughs> liking or a tendency for adopting stray, stray dogs. Penchant is the word of the day. Thank you, Maurice. And next, could we have the role of timer, please? That be Donovan, I think. Can you hear me, Donovan? Or Donovan will be our timer this evening. Did you want to go over the role of timer? Or we can come back. Okay. Basically, I'll keep track of how long um, a speech goes on the same topic. Um, so the time on for the for the tail speech is five to seven minutes. And the um, for the evaluation functions is also two to three minutes as well. And I'll also I'll figure out something for the um Time tunnel scheme. So the myth is five minutes or one minute. Mm. The pin box is yellow. I know it's not yellow, but I should I had I don't is yellow. That'll be six minutes or a minute and 40 or two minutes and 40 seconds. And for the last question is for the last time, um, seven minutes or two minutes or three minutes and 10. Back to you, David. Thank you, Donovan. And next, could we have the role of awe counter? Good evening, everyone. I am your awe counter tonight. When you use the filler words such as ah, uh, um, mm, like, you know, so you see something like this, I will count it. Thank you, Carrie. And I forget, do we have a general evaluator assigned? That was going to be Cheyenne. Uh, yeah, and no, I, I can I can take that, David. Okay, great, Luke. You want to go over that role, or? Sure. Um, so good evening, everybody. So I'll be the, the general evaluator tonight. So um, the general evaluator evaluates the meeting as a whole and uh, goes over the uh, evaluation team, such as the all counter 
for Marion Timer, and they give their evaluation report, and that will be my role tonight. Thank you, Luke. And I believe that covers all of our roles for this evening. So we will move on to our first prepared speech for this evening, which will be Luke with his educational overview. So over to you, Luke. Thanks, David. I appreciate it. All right. Good evening, everybody. So uh, the last education overview that I did, I did it on uh, not using your notes so much during a prepared speech. And one of the reasons I did this was because I know that was one of the main things that I did. It was one of the, the crutches that I used as my notes to have it because going, you know, off script and everything was kind of hard for me. Uh, so this time I want to do something else that was relatable to me and hopefully I think it's relatable to a lot of us in, in some shape or form, but that is uh, public speaking anxiety. So how many people here by a show of hands have had or have some form of public speaking anxiety? Okay, so I see everybody in the, in the room and, and yes, David, I got both hands up too. <laughs> um, and so are, what are some symptoms that you guys feel? Uh, David, what are just a symptom or two that, that are the most prevalent to you? For me, when I have to get up and give a speech, typically, although I have made some improvements, I'll feel just butterflies in my stomach. And also I'll feel like I'm going to forget everything. I'll mentally become foggy. And, but once I start giving the speech, I'm usually okay. It's amazing, but the, the beforehand is just, you know, the fear of failure, the fear of making a fool out of myself is uh, prevalent. And that's something I've suffered with all my life to some degree, so, but I'm doing okay with it. Absolutely, I, I, that is one of my biggest fears to get up in front of people, not look confident and just kind of, um, kind of feel like I, I'm, I've lost kind of control, you know. Um, uh, Maurice, what are a symptom or two that, that you've experienced? At one time, uh, go along with forgetting words and just general fear, it's actually a tendency to freeze in the middle of the speech or, or, or coming close to not even getting off the ground at all <laughs> in front of people. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I can definitely uh, relate to that. Um, Carrie, what, what about you? Most of the time, I'm okay. Of course, I feel some nervous, but I really enjoy that feeling, more thrilling, exciting. Well, one time I had a more fear than the thrilling. That was uh, probably competition or something because I took too serious. And how I, how I felt is what I felt is I would say, look, I couldn't sleep the night before. <laughs> so that's the, I, I, I couldn't sleep. Just my mind, oh, it, too excited. A lot of things going on. It's just, just too excited. I couldn't sleep. So no sleeping well is a symptom I experienced. Well, I, I wish I had um, was really excited about public speaking. <laughs> I wish I, I wish I, I was so excited that I had trouble sleeping. Um, but I, uh, I I tend to have that feeling after I do it, and I'm successful. And you know, it it wasn't you didn't just bomb it completely or anything like that. You know, so it's almost like a natural high. Um, and and I can I can definitely understand that. Donovan, what about you, man? Well, there are multiple ones that I do. So 
on the beach, I'll probably struggle for a little bit because, you know, sometimes when you get nervous, you start to um, scramble your wounds together and you tend to go quickly. Um, I sometimes it happens like before wounds, I, um, you know, get the occasion, the occasion stomach bug, you know, the stomach ache. Um, sometimes once I, um, well, I was once it was before my sister's wedding, and I was supposed to do a um do a um do a um load of one of the readings, and I just felt so nervous that I might mess something up because you know it's a wedding and I didn't want to you know bomb the wedding. So what I did is. The civil way of things, like if I going into class, as an example, I would I'll take deep breaths to um keep myself not so nervous, and I also know that one of the things is that the main thing is to practice, and that's the only thing I can do. Back to you. Absolutely. Thanks, Donovan. I, I appreciate it. And some of the things that you just mentioned too, um, you know, I, I have on my list as well, um, such as the up, upset stomach and, and speaking really fast, especially when you get nervous. Um, I'm always impressed. And I don't know if I ever told you, Maurice, how you're, you're so calm and you talk so precisely and you don't use filler words ever. And I need to learn to slow down and, and, and do what you do because I do get nervous. I start to talk fast and I start using filler words. So, um, so some of the symptoms that I wrote down, I appreciate everybody sharing is shaking hands. Uh, that was one thing that really bothered me. Um, I always put a pin in my hand so I can squeeze the pin. And if I have to point, I can just kind of point with the, the pin and instead of seeing my hand shake, I'm holding something tightly. And so that was one of the things that I did. Um, you know, blushing, pounding heart, um, quivering voice at times, for sure, uh, especially when you're feeling uneasy or unconfident. Um, dizziness, and uh, like Donovan was saying, like a stomach bug or upset stomach. So <sighs> these symptoms are a result of a fight or flight um, response. I think we've, we're all familiar with that kind of response. Um, it's a rush of adrenaline that prepares you for uh, danger. And, you know, when there's not any physical danger present, present um, you know, it gives us that rush of adrenaline, which is, which is not a good thing. Um, sometimes it is, it's, it's good to be on your toes and be ready and be prepared. But when it's overwhelming, and it is like that for me at times, um, then you almost kind of feel like you, you lose control of your body a little bit because your hands are shaking, you can't stop it. You know, your voice is quivering, you're trying, you're trying to calm down, but it's just not working. And it's just that overabundance of adrenaline. So this can make it very hard to do well in public speaking. Uh, it may cause you to avoid situations uh, that you have to public speak in. And, and that's been the case with me. It really did uh, until, until I joined Toastmasters. Um, so the fear of public speaking, does anybody know? know what that's called because I learned something new tonight so the fear of public speaking is called glossophobia it's spelled g-l-o-s-s-o-p-h-o-b-i-a glossophobia so glossophobia is the single most common phobia or fear that people have and over 75 percent of people experience glossophobia to some degree. And I can 100% believe that fact. I honestly feel like it would be over 75%. Um, so what are some ways that we can help reduce our public speaking fear and set us up for success? So I read an article and I got about 12 tips tonight. Uh, the first one was not in that article, but uh, it should have been, and that is to join Toastmasters. So I think we all here tonight have seen the benefits that we have achieved through Toastmasters. 
it gives us that exposure therapy that is so critical and allows us to start small and work our way up big. And so we get our feet wet, you know, and then we, we slowly get that confidence and we slowly build. And so uh, I think joining Toastmasters, I mean, truly has changed uh, public speaking for me and has allowed me not to conquer, but to truly reduce my, 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 my fear and give me the tools to, to deal with it. So practice, 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 practice. I practice religiously especially before a speech or anything. I'll practice it numerous times in the living room. I tie myself. I've even filmed myself before, uh, even tonight, uh, before this, as I was, I was writing it today. Uh, I actually practiced one time right before the meeting, uh, just, to, just to go over it to make sure it flows well and, and it sounds professional. Uh, prepare carefully, know your material, and I'm gonna, that's number three, and I'm gonna lump that in with number four, which is know your audience. So prepare your material and know your audience. Um, just keep in mind who you're speaking to. So say you're at a wedding, right? And, and you have to give the, the best man speech or anything like that. that well, and you're around friends and family. Well, you, you can relate, you know, family stories, friends stories, you know, uh, humor and stuff like that into that. And if you're, you know, giving a speech on, you know, exercise and nutrition or anything like that, just tailor your material to your audience and know your audience and while they're there and, and why they are there. Um, know your room and try to visit the venue. This might sound a little silly, but you know, I did this when I first came to Toastmasters. I would show up at Carpe Diem and this especially my first year before I gave a speech, I would show up there 30 to 45 minutes early and I would come upstairs and I would practice the speech in the empty room by myself. And I did this because you know, I was nervous and it helped me feel more, more comfortable. Uh, daily aerobic exercise and activities can help reduce anxiety by 50%. So this is true to just on a daily basis. Doing exercise, feeling good, having a healthy lifestyle is great. Now, I've even gotten up early in the morning before presentations and went and ran, not because I wanted to run in the dark or I wanted to exercise before. I literally did it to burn off the adrenaline, to burn off that cortisol, to burn off all, you know, try to burn off the nerves and calm myself down. And it 100% worked. Uh, eat for success. You know, eat, you know, vegetables, fruits, you know, lean meats, stay away from caffeine, sweets, empty calories. What you put in your body is what you're going to get out and feeding it healthy, wholesome food is one way to feel your best. Uh, get optimal rest. Everybody is different uh, uh, for the amount that they need, but sleep is critical. So know the amount that you need, get the quality rest so your mind and your body can, can heal and, and, and feel the best for the next day. Dress for success. So just dressing and, and looking your best will help boost your confidence a little bit. There's times at work, uh, even today, you know, I didn't iron my uniform like I normally did because I was in a hurry and it always kind of bothers me and it does kind of hurt my confidence a little bit because I like to look sharp and it helps with, um, you know, boosting that, that confidence, especially when you're up on stage or giving a presentation. Uh, set up the room early so that you're ready ahead of time and you're not sitting there watching people come in and set up and you're trying to get your projector going, you're trying to log in, you're trying to get your presentation up and people are trying to talk to you and you're getting nervous because you wanna start on time. Uh, get there early, have everything done. So when people are walking in and, and ready for the presentation, you're just there and you can conversate with the people, uh, kind of help relate, you know, and, and kind of even calm some of your nerves because now you're speaking in front of a room as people are coming in slowly and everyone's not just sitting there staring at you and it kind of helps uh, ease the tension a little bit. And that's a, that's honestly a, a trick that I've used uh, before and I will continue to use. Uh, last two is take a glass of water with you in a speech. So obviously your, your throat and your mouth don't get dry and just try to engage with your audience, look friendly, use humor. That's something I have a hard time doing. Uh, hopefully something I'll learn more here in Toastmasters, but I didn't mean for this education overview to go uh, as long as it did. I know that we had a little bit of time um, and, and we were definitely down some roles. 
but I hope everybody learned something from it and uh, and can hopefully benefit from from one or two of the suggestions. So with that, uh, I'll turn it back over to our Toastmaster. Thanks, Luke. That was a really good educational overview slash speech. I learned a few things. Uh, the aerobic exercise, I'm really down with that. I found that when I get out and do some jogging, then it just really lowers my anxiety levels if I'm having a particularly anxious time. And also, I like that dress for success. That's not something I typically do, but uh, when I do dress and look better, I feel better. So that, that's a really good tip as well. Uh, they're all good tips. Thank you, Luke. And I think we could go ahead and do maybe just one table topic each if y'all would like. And so I will turn it over to me, the table topics master. So welcome everybody to the table topics portion of the Toastmasters meeting this evening. And I will pick each of the four of y'all for with a one topic. And we want to start with Carrie. Would you like to go, Carrie? Sure. Okay. My question for you is, can you describe an aroma that has special meaning to you? Aroma? Aroma, like a smell, something no. that in, in your past life or recent, something that has special meaning to you. Hello, everyone. The special aroma or scent that I really have put the meaning for. I would say, I would share the two types of smell. My favorite one is cucumber or melon. I believe I have, this one is my most favorite one. And when I feel anxiety or relaxed or have fun or Odor the stink in this room. I spray this and it makes me calm, especially before the night. I spray this around the bed or pillow and it makes me feel really better and calm, peaceful, and even sometimes happy. And the second type of aroma or scent is you probably know what I'm talking about. It's some little hard to describe, but dry ground and suddenly raining and smell like a ground or soil or that, that but we probably understand what I'm talking about that's the smell I really like it because I feel nature I feel close to the nature and then since that's the family I smell wherever you are in the world even in my hometown home country hometown in Japan or even in Mobile or somewhere in the states in the in this country the same smell somehow and I love it thank you so much back to the uh, table master. Thank you, Carrie. That's what came to my mind as well. When I was a child, the um, summer, I used to play outside all the time as a kid. And in the summertime, after a rainstorm, the smell and the ground and just the odors that I can still picture that or still remember that that has such special meaning. So next, we could go to Donovan for a question if you're up for one. And it is, what is your biggest pet peeve? I, I think you're muted as well. Can you repeat what a, what a pet peeve is? Sure. What is your biggest pet peeve? something that annoys you or okay in... thank you my the question that i've been proposed to you is what is one of my biggest pet peeves or what annoys me you know many things that annoy me but one of the things is when people look down on people who have intellectual disabilities because they expect them to be less educated, less, less, um, um, less, don't really pay attention that much, 
and sometimes I struggle and those other things that sort of get, get me a little bit because we can't we can't stop it because of our disability and we can't it's just too real. It's just a part of you. And that's one of the reasons why it bothers me because because they expect that we are, you know, uneducated. And the people that tax leadership is real educated, but real uneducated. That's how I like to put it. Um, and that's how I live my life, basically. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Donovan. And I can really see what you're saying there. I, uh, myself, I, some of, I don't really have the gift of gab, but some people that do, like politicians, for example, that are just incredibly gifted speakers, aren't necessarily, you know, there's a, not a, necessarily a correlation with how well we present ourselves and how, and our intelligence. And it's, it's um, definitely a good point. Thank you. So next, I will ask Maurice a question. Name, or can you tell me something that is really silly that you were into as a child? What was something that I was into as a child that's real silly? As I take a few extra seconds to try to think about that, Hmm. I know there's a bunch of them, but I just can't think of one off the top of my head. So something as a child that was real silly that I had a penchant for. Just for the sake of time, I will just say Just drawing, draw, drawing silly things. And I, I could think of several examples, but I, I, I guess at a certain point in my life, I just had a tendency to doodle a, a bunch of crazy things in general. <laughs> Mr. Topic Master. Thank you, Maurice. I can relate to that. I think doodling can actually be a really good way to stimulate our minds as well and just come up with new ideas. So, but it can be considered silly as well. So finally, I'll ask Luke a question. What is a fashion trend that should never be brought back? <laughs> okay, so the... Uh, question I have been asked is what is a fashion trend that should never be brought back? Um, the first thing that comes to mind was uh, when I was younger, I was in seventh grade. Uh, how many of you know of a group called crisscross and they wore their pants backwards and uh, they sang uh, a numerous songs. Maurice, you know who I'm talking about. And uh, so when I was younger, Criss Cross was super popular. And we used to listen to their music, their songs. And I remember going to school and kids and myself would wear our pants backwards. And we thought it was kind of cool you know, because you want to be like crisscross. And looking back now, I, uh, I would say that the penchant to wear my pants backwards at the time seemed cool. And I wouldn't go back and change it by any means. But I would say going forward that that's a fashion that probably should not be brought back. Back to you, Mr. Toppet Smasher. Thank you, Luke. And I'm not familiar with the crisscross, or if I have, I've lost that memory.
but I completely agree with you. Wearing pants backwards would just be very odd, uh, especially if I had to pee. But um, OK, so I think that's about it for our table topics this evening. I appreciate everyone participating, and I think this is really good practice for talking off the top of our heads. I will now move on to the general evaluator, which Luke has. Well, actually, I'll turn it back to the Toastmaster, which is me. Hi, everyone. Now I'll move it to Luke, who is our general evaluator for this evening. All right, thanks, David. OK, but before I give my general evaluation of the meeting uh, as a whole, we'll go ahead and call on our uh, evaluation team really quick for a uh, report. So, Maurice, I would like to start with you as our grammarian. All right, thank you, Luke. And before I give the grammarian's report, I thought of something when I commented on Luke during Luke's educational overview that I thought about after the fact that I couldn't get in afterward, after I spoke. But with all those exercises that Luke mentioned to help you be less nervous and help you to speak better, all these characteristics along with practice and joining Toastmasters will help give you the penchant for public speaking. Now for the grammarians. Mm -hmm. I didn't really catch any misuse of the English language. And as far as the word of the day, it sounds like Luke and myself gave the word of the day. And if anyone else did, you can chime in now. <laughs> Otherwise, that'll be the grammarist report for this evening. Back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. Thanks, Maurice. And I can see you're, you're home from your tropical vacation, unfortunately. I do not see your background anymore. I almost do not recognize you without sitting on a beach. Um, mm. Okay, so next uh, we will move over to our timers report. Donovan, can we get Hi, that report, thank, please? Thank you for the um, help on the um, schedule of you. Luke, you have 13 minutes, 42 seconds. Um, the next portion is the same topic. Carry the uh, one minute. In 29 seconds. Myself, I have one minute and 40 seconds. Maurice had one minute and one second. And Luke has one minute and 14 seconds. And just now, I just um, timed Maurice on a Grammarian report. We only have 57 seconds. Thank you, back to you, Luke. Thank you, Donovan, I appreciate that. And uh, Carrie, can we get our all counters report, please? Hello, everyone, this is Carrie again. Luke, your educational overview slash speech, you said uh, seven, six times, you know, three times. Actually, second half of your speech, I focus on two very well because it was very interesting. And I didn't really count it. So this is basically from your first, first half. And then your table topic, you made uh, twice. So once. Next, Donovan, your table topic. You said so twice, uh, once, like twice. You know, one. Maurice, you said so just one. I thought very good. And back to Luke. Thank you, Carrie. I appreciate that. And now I will go on to our general evaluation of the meeting as a whole. So we did start late. I do apologize about that. Uh, I will get the host privileges and I'll also pass that over to David too. Uh, so multiple people have it. Um, and then that way, if, if 
you know, somebody's absent from the meeting, we can definitely, you know, continue to start on time. I appreciate you guys waiting and standing by. I really wanted to have a meeting tonight since, you know, I have been gone the last two weeks and, and, and everything. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that you guys stayed on and sorry if my education overview went a little over tonight. I honestly was timing myself at about seven, eight minutes, and I guess it would end up being 13. Uh, but it is a topic that I was passionate about because it really means a lot to me and how much it affects. So anyway, I, I'm glad. I hope you guys enjoyed it and, and learned something from it. Um, other than that, you know, it was a, a, a lighter meeting, and I think it still went great. So that's the general evaluation of the meeting, and I'll turn it back over to our Toastmaster. Thank you, Luke. And I did truly enjoy your educational overview. I think one of the reasons it went longer was because of the audience participation, but that can be kind of an unknown when you do that. But I think it's a good thing to do, even if it goes long. And we had plenty of time this evening, so everything worked out great. And everybody had a chance for a table topic, so it was that was good. And moving on, so the educational overview has already been completed. Do we have any awards this evening? No, no awards. And is there uh, any other business or do I turn it back over to the president? I forget. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I can close out the meeting, David, okay. if, uh, if, if we're done with the uh, main portion. I think so. Okay, thanks, David. Uh, I kind of just said already what, what I wanted to say in, in my general evaluation for, for closing. I just want to say thank you again for your continued dedication to Toastmasters during these trying times. I know we haven't had a speech in a little while, and I truly am working on one. Uh, I need to get through this board first, and once I do that, which hopefully will be tomorrow or Thursday, um, Hopefully I'll, I'll have a speech uh, prepared for, for next Monday. If not, it'll definitely be the Monday after that because now we're out of our, our major training environment that, that we're going into. So anyway, please sign up for speeches. Uh, I did reach out to a contact that Maurice sent our way, uh, my way, and, and I appreciate it. I never heard back from her, but I called and left her a, a voicemail and I'll, I'll call back again, but uh, I, never, I never heard back from her. Um, I still reached out to, to Marianne and, uh, and Heather Lakes, um, and I've uh, been sending them the, uh, uh, the links for the meetings. And so I will uh, probably want to, I'm going to reach out to Peter and some of the others that we haven't seen in a while just to say, hey, see how they're doing, make sure they're okay, and uh, tell them that we're looking forward to having them back. So, and with that, so we have one minute until 745. So uh, once again, Thanks everybody for coming. Does anybody have anything in closing? No, I'll just add that I think during any kind of business and meeting, that yeah, you know, things always there's always hiccups or things go wrong. Like you know, we have trouble getting the Zoom going. So it's just how we react to it that's important. And I think everybody did really well. You know, nobody got too annoyed, and we're still here and we had a good meeting. So that's what's important. Thanks, David. I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, Carrie, did you have something? Um, uh, I would like to say thank you, Luke. I enjoy your speech very much. And I learned something, especially exercise. Before I go to the meeting, the Toastmaster meeting, the, the cafe, I walked five or 10 minutes before that to calm myself. And then that, but so walking to this make me calm down. Second is get get out of the stress basically or nervousness or whatever. So bad thing out, good thing in. That's that's the that really works. Just a simple walking around the corner of the cafe, it really works. And then your speech is was very good. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to make a speech next week. I'll, I'll sign up. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carrie. I, I, I really appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to getting an evaluator in there too, to evaluate you. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to speak as well. But like I said, if it's not next week, uh, it will be the week after. Um, but I will be speaking in the next two weeks myself. So uh, you have my word on that. Uh, does anybody else have anything else to pass? 
Okay, guys. I um, hope everybody has a, a, a great week and um, I'm glad everyone showed up tonight. I thought it was a great meeting, even though it was light. And um, we will see everybody next Monday.